Hello and welcome to 101 Labs, web development course, Lab 45, Introduction to JavaScript and Browser Execution. Lab objective, demonstrate how to embed JavaScript in HTML documents and understand the effects of script tag placement on page loading and execution order. JavaScript enables dynamic web page behavior, allowing browsers to update content without reloading the page. As one of the three core web technologies alongside HTML and CSS, JavaScript code is executed directly by the web browser. Though implementation can vary slightly between browsers, most follow the ECMAScript specification, which standardizes the language. JavaScript can be embedded directly within HTML documents using script tags or loaded from external files. The position of these script tags significantly impacts execution timing. Scripts placed at the end of the body execute after page content loads, while scripts in the document head execute before the body content is processed. This positioning choice affects both user experience and functionality as scripts might need to interact with page elements that must exist before the script runs. In this lab, you will experiment with different script placements in HTML documents to observe their impact on execution order and page element interaction. The lab tools you'll need are VS Code and Google Chrome. Task one, create a basic HTML document with embedded JavaScript at the end of the body. Open VS Code. Open the integrated terminal in VS Code. In the terminal, navigate to your course folder and create the new lab folder. Once in the correct directory, type code, reuse window period to open the current folder in VS Code's file explorer. Go to the VS Code Explorer sidebar and click on the new file icon and type index.html and enter. Set up a basic HTML structure by typing exclamation mark and pressing tab or enter. Update the title to JavaScript execution. Add the following body code, save the file, open index.html in Google Chrome, open the browser's developer tools, observe the message, JavaScript at the end of the body displayed in the console. Note that the page content, headline and paragraph, is visible while the JavaScript executes. Open Visual Studio Code. We can close the Welcome tab, open the command line with View dropdown, Terminal, change directory to Home, Web Development Course, Labs, make directory Lab 45, CD Lab 45, code dash dash, reuse dash window, period. The Lab 45 folder has opened within our current instance of VS Code. Close the Welcome tab. Click on the new file icon, type index.html, enter. Type exclamation, enter. Double click on the title to change it to JavaScript execution. Move the cursor to inside the body tag. Add the, the h1 and paragraph elements code from the lab document. Add an opening script tag. New line, the JavaScript code begins here. Type console.log opening bracket and quotation mark. JavaScript at the end of the body. Closing quotation mark and bracket, semicolon. Next line, closing script tag. Save with Control S, Command S on Mac. Right click on the open index.html tab at the top. Copy path. Open your web browser. In the URL bar, paste and go. We have our header and paragraph content on display. Now right click, inspect for the dev tools to open. Let's adjust dev tools panel to be a good size so we can see what's going on. Select the console panel. Our JavaScript code has created a log on the browser's console. In addition to our HTML code being presented and in the elements panel, expand the body tag here. We can see our code all present. Task two. Move the script to the head section to observe differences in execution order. Return to VS Code and modify index.html by cutting the script element from the body and pasting it in the head section. Save with Control S and refresh the page in your browser. When the debugger statement is encountered, the browser will pause execution and switch focus to the open developer tools. Continue execution with the Resume Script Execution button. Check the console tab in the developer tools. Notice that JavaScript in the head section appears in the console before the page content is displayed. This demonstrates that JavaScript in the head section executes before the body content is passed and rendered. Switch back to VS Code. Select the whole script element. Right click, cut. Put the cursor at the end of inside the head tag. Paste the script element, 
with Ctrl and V or Command V on Mac. Insert a new line at the beginning of the script element. Type debugger, semicolon, save. Switch to the browser and refresh. Give the browser a moment to clear the page and repass it. The Open DevTools has refocused itself onto the Sources tab and opened up the view of index.html, highlighting line 8, where the browser has paused the JavaScript at this point in the code, effectively pausing the page loading. Debugger does one thing only, and that is pausing all code execution. And the browser loading animation hasn't stopped, indicating that the page hasn't finished passing everything from start to finish. There is no content yet on the page because we are running this debugger that pauses everything early on in the code, even before the browser has, has a chance to interpret and render the content inside the body. At this part of the sources panel, we have some debug options. Resume script execution, step over to next main piece of code, step deeper into the current bit of code if it is possible, step out of the deeper code, simply step to the next runnable line of code. Deactivate code breakpoints or pause points, such as our debugger instruction. This will make more sense later on when we have more complex code to run. But in the meantime, let's click step over. On to the start of line 9, nothing is yet in the console. And click step over onto line 10. The code on line 9 has been run, which was our console log, and we can see it in the console. Now that we have run all of the contents of the script tag, there is no more JavaScript to run on the page. When we resume script execution, all that is left is for the browser to continue loading the page, closing out of the head tag, reading and rendering the body content. Click resume script execution, and now our page has completed loading. Running the debugger at the end of the body tag pauses the script after the content has already been rendered. I'll demonstrate that here briefly. This much of the document has been passed before our code has been run. Task 3. Create a script that demonstrates interaction with page elements to show why script placement matters. Modify index.html to include a button and two scripts, one in the head and one at the end of the body. Save the file and refresh the browser. Check the console and observe. The head script logs null for the button element because it runs before the button exists in the DOM. The body script successfully logs the button element because it runs after the button has been created. Click the button to verify that the click functionality works. This demonstrates why scripts that interact with page elements are often placed at the end of the body. Switch back to VS Code. We're going to copy and paste the demonstration code. Go to the lab document in task 3 and select the script element code here. Copy, switch to VS Code, and paste that into our head, replacing the old script element. In our lab, copy the body HTML content, paste over the body content, quick format. Back in the lab doc, select the second script tag, and copy, put the cursor at the end of the body tag, and paste, and save back in the browser, refresh. The page has loaded the new content including our button, focusing on the console panel, and our four console logs have run. To get a clearer rundown of the code, let's put the browser and the code editor side by side. Click the three dots here and choose dock to bottom. Resize the console and the code editor window. The first line of code we run here is the console log, script in head executing, which we can see showing on the console in the browser. The next thing that happens is behind the scenes, we try to target the button element on the page and create a reference to it so that we can create an interaction with it. But when we try and log the button to see how the button has been received, we see our text button from head script, but following that in the console is the word null. In JavaScript, null means nothing, or no value. In this case, it means the browser couldn't find the button at the time the code ran. The button is down in the body and hasn't been loaded yet. On this line, script at the end of the body executing, 
we can see that here in the browser, and on the right, it tells us that it is coming from line 23. In our index.html, it is on line 23, after the creation of the button on line 20. Now on line 25, once again, our code tries to select the element and create a reference to it called button. Within the HTML document, get the following HTML element by its ID attribute, my button. Line 26, log to the console, button from the body script, and then the button we've referenced. In the browser console, we've got the text and also the HTML element that we targeted. Hovering over the element in the console conveniently also shows its location on the rendered page. And if we right click on it, the browser gives us the option to view it in the live elements panel. Now the dev tools have switched to the elements panel and the button is highlighted. Expand the script tag to see that our body script code is right where we put it. Let's open up the console again. The last code is the interaction that we want to run. Take the button and in the event that a user clicks on the button we referenced earlier, run the function on the next line where use the browser's built-in alert pop-up to say button was clicked. On the page now, we can click around but nothing happens, but when we click on the button, it brings up the browser's alert box. And the message is there just as we typed it. We must click OK to be able to continue using the page. Running the alert box is similar to debugger in that it pauses all code execution when it's run, but it is not good for debugging purposes and is meant to be more of an important message for your user that blocks them from doing anything until they acknowledge the message. In this lab, I've added extra context to help explain what's going on in the code. You don't need to memorize everything right now. The goal is just to understand the flow. You can always come back and rewatch it later if you need to. And that wraps up this lab. Great work. See you in the next one.